Hello, in this video lecture, we're going to talk about homogeneous linear systems. Um, that is, we have a system of linear, and that could be, you know, it could be two degrees or higher. Okay, so we have a system of n, we have a, basically a system of linear homogeneous uh, differential equations. And we're going to talk about how to solve that. Okay. How to solve these type of uh, problems. All right. So to start out with, um, here's okay. So basically, we have x. So x being a vector here, and so so this is your basically you can think of this as your storage for the uh, differentials, okay, of the differential equations. So that's going to be stored into this vector, and that's a prime there. And we have A equals to X, okay? All right, and so this, the X vector, the vector X here represents the, uh, basically that is our solution vector. And then A is going to correspond, uh, basically that is your um, coefficient matrix. So that's going to basically consist of the coefficients for the associated system that we're working with. All right, so given this, okay. So this is what we call general, right, linear. First order system. All right. Okay, so something in this form, uh, basically the solution of this looks like this. Okay, there's our solution vector, and it has, it's going to have this form. We have, let's call this, each of these entries, uh, K1, K2, up to K of N. So that's going to match the size of your, um, of your matrix. What I mean by that, if, you're, so if your matrix is uh, N by N, then this has to be N by 1. Okay. All right. So again, we're going to be looking at, we're going to be focusing on these type of problems. So this is sort of a compact way of writing those. Okay. And okay. So basically, here we have the solution form. Okay. And it turns out, and remember, A here, A here is n by n. Okay. We're assuming this is square matrix here. And it turns out that the vector that you have here turns out to be what's called an eigenvector of the matrix A. And therefore, there's an, and therefore lambda, that is your corresponding eigenvalue. Okay. So if you've taken linear algebra, then you've already kind of familiar with these terms. Uh, if not, that's okay. We're gonna go to explain how to get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, for the given matrix, okay? All right. So let's take a closer look at what's going on here. And remember, keep in mind, we're dealing with homogeneous system here. Um, if you think about this, this can be written as x, the vector x prime minus 
eight times x equals to zero vector. Okay. All right. So what we can do here, okay, let's elaborate more on this. So we said that this vector, right? This uh, this is a solution of this. Okay. All right. So let's see what happens uh, when we take and plug this back into here. All right, so let's take, in order to do that, we need to take the derivative of this, of this solution vector, okay? So that's going to give us, um, what we're gonna have x prime, so taking the derivative of this, you're gonna end up getting, okay? Um, yeah, so because we're taking the derivative of this respect to t, and we're going to get k times t, sorry, not k times, I'm sorry, k times lambda, okay, times e to the lambda t. So k is a vector, and then we can rewrite this as lambda times k times e to the lambda t. So that's just the derivative of our solution vector. Okay. And then plugging this, plugging both of these back into here, okay, we end up getting this. We got lambda times k times e to the lambda t equals to a times k times e to the lambda t. Okay. So there is, right, so there's x, the derivative of x, there's our coefficient matrix, and then there's x. Okay. So then this implies. Right, we can go ahead and um, we can go ahead and um, simplify this. Okay. So we have e to the lambda t here, right? And e to the lambda t, we can go ahead and um, cancel those out. Okay. So basically, we're left with this. So in fact, let's let's rewrite this way. setting everything equal to zero. And then uh, we can go ahead and factor out e to the lambda t. So we're left with a times k minus lambda k equals to zero. Okay. And keep in mind, this is the zero vector here. Uh, since this is a, a vector and this is a vector. Okay. All right. All right, so, so when we're solving, so basically we end up with this. Um, so going back to some principles from linear algebra, uh, when we're solving, so the goal here is we can use this to figure out what, um, to figure out what K is and what lambda is, okay? Um, so when we look at this, okay, E to the lambda T, uh, because of the, uh, because of this function, because of the exponential function, we know this is never going to be zero. So what we end up with is that we primarily end up with um, a times k minus lambda k equals to zero. And then from there, we can go ahead and factor out k. But when we do that, remember, so we have to keep things um, compatible. So what do I mean by that? Well, because if you look here, this is a mate, this is going to be, we have a matrix times a vector. So that's, this is going to be a vector. And this is just a lambda times K is just a multiple of vectors. So when we take the difference, you end up with a vector here. So to preserve this, all right, when we factor out K, um, you know, if we don't have the I there, then we have we have basically a matrix minus, right, uh, scalar value, okay? So, so 
we can't do that. Operation wise, we cannot do that. So to keep things pr to preserve this subtraction, we can put an I here. Now the I means that um, the I basically is the identity matrix. Okay, so if A is n by n, then I will be the n by it will be an n n by n identity matrix. Okay, so so I here denoted by I of n. It's basically, it's going to be one, zero, dot, dot, dot. And then you have zero, one, dot, 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 and so on. Okay. So again, if you've taken linear algebra, then this, this identity matrix is, can be thought of as a basically a storage of the standard basis vectors, okay? Uh, which uh, basically has some more important uh, has some more uh, other important meanings behind this, okay? Some more uses, okay? But that's what that's what this is. And so sometimes um, in linear algebra, linear algebra, sometimes we we rewrite this as e one. Okay? So that would be the vector for e one, okay? A representation for e one, e two, and so on. So E1 is basically this vector, right? We have one in the first, right? first position. E2, you have one in the, um, in the second row, second column, and so on. E of N, you have one in the nth row and nth column, okay? So again, going back to some principles from linear algebra. All right, so that is basically used to preserve this. Okay, so if we take A minus lambda I, that is, going to give us a matrix, and then the matrix times this K vector will give us a vector. All right. All right, so again, um, well here we have okay, lambda. Lambda is what's called an, an eigenvalue. And K, is the corresponding eigenvector. So this right here, remember this is all coming from this. And that is basically we took our solution vector, right, plugged it into here, right? And so this gives us an insight on how to on how to solve this, how to get the components of that solution vector. Okay. All right. So, by definition, okay, um, an eigen. So, by definition, we want um, we want to figure out a non-trivial solution for this system. Okay. Here. We want to figure out a non-trivial solution. Um, the reason is because the eigenvector should be a non, it should be a non, should be a non-zero vector by definition. Okay. Um, eigenvalue, you can have an eigenvalue of zero. That's possible. In fact, if you remember, if you've taken linear algebra, if if you get or if you have a matrix, right, that has an eigenvalue of zero, um, that basically tells you the matrix is singular. So that's another way to tell if a matrix is invertible or not. Okay. Um, so in this case, our focus is to figure out, um, is to go look here. We want this to have a non-trivial solution. Okay. So in order to do that, and again, we're going to go back to some principles of linear algebra. In order to do this, we have to we have to look at um, the determinant of this matrix, a minus lambda i. So if you're interested in a non-trivial solution, and what I mean by non-trivial again is that we don't want, um, we don't, we're not interested in the zero, the zero vector. Okay, we, okay, um, right. We mean that we there is so the zero vector is a solution to this, but we're interested in finding other possible solutions. Okay, um, to this homogeneous system here. Okay, so um, in, so in, in there's a theorem, and then you're that says that. If you have a system like this, 
And if the determinant is equal to zero, then therefore, right, uh, therefore there's infinitely many solutions, okay? Meaning that the zero vector is not the only solution, okay? All right, so let's write this out. Okay, so we're interested in this. But we want, basically we want to force this to be equal to zero. This, uh, sorry, want the determinant of this. And that is the symbol for a determinant. Okay? So we want right, this to be equal to zero. Okay? And by, by calculating that, um, by, by, cal by calculating this, we can figure out the eigenvalues. Right? We can figure out what lambda is to achieve this. And that is going to get basically what we need. All right? And again, the reason we want this to be zero is because uh, we're interested in a non-trivial solution. Okay. All right. So and by the way, uh, this is this this system here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna write this way the determinant of a minus lambda i. Okay. This is going to give us, this part right here is going to give us what's called a characteristic equation, or sometimes we call it the auxiliary equation. All right. Okay, so that's, our, that's going to give us our characteristic equation. And so this ends up being uh, this this ends up being a polynomial. And if it's in this case, if we're working with an n by n matrix, then we end up getting an n degree polynomial. Okay. So let's all right. So then once we do that, okay, once we figure out the lambda that satisfies this, then we plug it back into our we plug it back into this matrix, and then we solve basically solve this. And that's and this is basically solving for the null space, what's called the null space of, of A minus lambda I. Okay, so we solve for here. Then, Then we solve for the null space of A minus lambda I. Again, null space is basically the collection of vectors that get mapped to the zero vector, okay? Um, that is basically the solution of the homogeneous system, okay, for this one. Okay. So, um, and so in that case, because we're forcing the determinant to be zero, that means we're gonna end up with at least one free variable. So this is the general strategy of solving these type of um, systems of differential equations. Okay? And so once we, again, so once you get the eigenvalue, once you get the eigenvalue and eigenvectors, then um, you plug them back into here, right? And that's give, and this gives you, uh, basically gives you your solutions. Okay, so let's go through an example of this.
So on these, you can imagine, right? You could, going back to some things that we talked about earlier before, um, you can get distinct, right? Based on this polynomial here, um, you can get distinct roots, right? Just, okay. Um, you distinct solutions, right? Or you can get um, solutions that involve multiplicity um, or even complex values. Now for this, for the time being, we're gonna just focus on the real solutions, okay? All right, so let's go through, so let's go through and illustrate this with an example, okay? All right, so let's say we wanna solve Then we want to solve for D, we want to solve, we have dx dt, dy dt. Let's see, for the first one, we have 2x plus 3y. For the next one, we have 2x plus y. Okay. So basically, we have x prime equals to this, and then y prime equals to this. Okay. So the first thing is to obviously write this in, um, in basically what's called a, uh, a in matrix form. Okay, we want to get the matrix system from here. Um, okay, so we have dx dt, y dt. equals to, okay, so the matrix A is going to come from the coefficients of these, okay, so you have, um, so you basically have a column for your, uh, for your coefficients of X, and the next column will be for the coefficients of Y, so it's going to be two, next one we have three, and two, and then one, okay, so um, very similar to you know, if you, you know, pre-calculus, they talk about the same way, right? Um, the only difference is that these are, um, these are going to be numbers, okay? That's the same idea. Okay, so then we also have our variables, right? X and Y. So there's our, right? There's our system that's associated with this. Right? And there is A, right? So our the goal here, right, the goal here is to figure out, okay, is to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of that matrix. Okay, um, going back over here, this is our process. Okay, once we do that, once we get those, then we basically have our solution for this problem. Okay, All right. So let's do that now. Okay, so using this a minus lambda i. This is a two by two, so therefore this identity matrix has to be two by two. So one zero, zero one. And that's gonna give us, okay? So to do this, you subtract the entries component wise. So you have two minus lambda. Okay. Minus lambda, and then we have three. This is gonna be two minus, I'm sorry, two, right? Two minus zero. And then we have one minus them. So there's our, right, there's our matrix A, or sorry, A minus them. Okay. So now we need to take, the next thing is to take the determinant of this, set it equal to zero, and then solve, right, figure out the, the eigenvalues, figure out the lambda values that make that zero, okay? All right, so I'm going to solve for lambda here. Okay, so we take the determinant. Okay, 
and then set that equal to zero. Okay. All right, let's do that over here. Okay, solving this, remember, so this is a two by two, so you're going to have for a two by two matrix. Um, remember that if you have the matrix, right, if you have A, B, C, and D, and if you're taking the determinant of that, uh, that looks like this. So you take the product of these entries minus the product of these entries. So applying that here, we're going to get two minus lambda times one minus lambda minus six equals to zero. Okay. okay and multiplying everything out, okay, we end up getting a lambda squared minus three lambda minus four. Okay. Um, solving that, um, this is factorable. Okay. Uh, okay, so this should be plus one and then lambda minus four. And then we end up getting lambda equals to negative one and lambda equals to four. So there's our, right? There's, there's the eigenvalues, okay? That we're gonna work with, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to figure out, uh, we need to use these to figure out the corresponding eigenvectors, okay? So let's look at uh, the first one. For lambda equals to negative one, okay, we're going to plug that back into here, okay? Because remember, this is what we need to, right? We need to solve for the null space of this, okay? For lambda equals to negative one, we're going to have the two minus negative one, okay, three. And then we have two, and then one minus negative one. It's going to give us three here, three, two, and then two. So again, just plugging those back into here. Okay. All right. So now what we do here is we basically uh, we we go we want to uh, we want to solve for the null space. Okay. So we have uh, basically we have this. So what I did here, okay, is remember, so this is this is acting as a coefficient matrix, okay? And then I augmented the zero vector, okay? So we have a so we have a system here, right? We're trying to figure out, okay, um, we're trying to figure out the null space of this. Okay, so I went ahead and augmented the zero vector there. And then what we do here is we 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 want to, in order to solve this, we want to, or we can, um, we can put this into what's called echelon form. All right, so doing that, so it's pretty easy to see um, that we're going to end up getting a row of zeros there. And that makes sense because remember that we're forcing, we're forcing this to be zero, okay? In our system, okay, we want going back to here, okay, going back to this form. Okay. 
we were forcing this to be zero, right? So that means, okay, if we're forcing the determinant of this to be zero, that means we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have at least one free variable, okay? So we do, basically what we do is we apply what's called an REF on this. So REF means that you're doing, you basically stands for uh, reduced row echelon form, okay? And the way, so what you want to do is you want to make that zero, okay? So you can get the zero by multiplying the first row by minus two thirds, okay? So I'm actually, so let me explain a little bit more here, okay? okay so what we can do is we take minus two thirds times row one, Okay. and add that to row two, and then store the result in row two. Again, the reason we use minus two thirds is because when you take minus two thirds times three, you're gonna get minus two and then plus, and then plus two would give you zero here. That's, we want to get this to zero, okay? So we have three here, and because this is also three, this part's gonna be zero. And then zero is not gonna affect everything. It's not gonna get affected. All right. All right, so then furthermore, what we can do is we can divide each, we can divide the first row, right? Each of the elements in the first row by three. So that's one third times row one, and we overwrite with row one. Okay, so it's always a good habit. And if you haven't taken in your algebra yet, um, it's always a good habit to show like this, okay? Um, especially if you're beginning, if you're just learning how to do the row operations, okay? And again, this is something, depending on who you took, um, this is something that they should talk about in pre-calculus, okay? Um, I certainly do talk about that in my pre-calculus class towards the end, uh, because it is, a, it is very important to know how to do this. Uh, obviously, because we're using it here, uh, but this process is also used in more advanced coursework. All right, so the bottom line is that we got this, okay, and transform this matrix into here. So this is, um, basically we say that this matrix is row equivalent to this one, okay? And those are the sequence of row operations that we used to achieve this result. Now, the thing is, when you, um, when you use these row operations, okay, um, it preserves the original solution to this, Right, it preserves a solution to this to the original system. Okay. All right. So you can also do this on your calculator. Okay, and I'll put a I'll put a link in the comment section um, that will link you to another video on how to do that. Okay, because sometimes, um, you know, obviously, if this was like a ten by ten matrix, doing this kind of work would be very tedious. Okay. All right. Um, and you can also use Octave. Um, Octave has a built-in, very nice, it's, it's actually built for this kind of, um, uh, to this kind of operations, okay? All right, um, so now we got, this, we got to this point. So now we need to figure out, we need to solve this system, okay? All right, so what we do here is, okay, we want, okay, we're going, so go back to here. We have a row of zeros as we expected. So we get what's called a free variable, okay? Which means that you have okay, zero times anything, right? Will give you zero. So this is gonna give you uh, what's called a free variable, okay? So we have, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let, okay, typically what we do is we say, um, again, let's, since we're working with X and Y here, okay? So we're gonna let, this is X, this is the column for X, this was the column for Y. So we're going to let y be equal to some value t. That's our free variable, where t is some real number. Okay, so this is the formal way to, um, to set this up. So we let y be equal to some value, okay? And again, you should never use the same variable. Um, you should never use the same variable to assign this. It's, it's not good mathematically. It's not good coding practice, okay? All right, so you're letting y be some value t. 
All right, so now from the first row, okay, you're going to have x plus, okay, uh, plus y equals to zero. Well, we know y is t, so this is going to give us x plus t equals to zero, and obviously x is going to be minus t. There we go. We have x um, and y. So our solution vector for this okay, is going to be minus t and t, and we can go ahead and factor out the t, and we have minus one and one, where t is an element of the real numbers. Okay. Now keep in mind here, okay, that basically we have this. Okay. So any solution, okay, this turns out. So this turns out to be um, the This turns out to be the solution of the system, right? So any, right, any t value. And you put any t value there, you get a solution, including t equals zero, which gives us the trivial solution. Um, so we basically say that x, right? We basically say that any solution that's in the span of this vector is a solution. Okay. Good. So this implies that x belongs to the span of your vector minus one one. This right here, this is called the, this is basically an eigen, this is basically the basis for the eigen, for the eigen span, okay? So we call this the eigen, right? This is basically the eigen basis. Right. Which means that one and negative one also belong in the set, right? Because you can multiply both of these by minus one and it's in the same, it's in the same span, right? Okay. All right, so let's, so one and negative one would also be suitable, okay? So, uh, but the point is that we have, we have basically our eigenvector. For uh, the eigenvalue of minus one. Okay, so now let's figure out the eigenvector for lambda equals to four. Okay. So let's do that back, let's go back over here. Okay. Okay, so for lambda equals to four, for lambda equals to four, we plug that in, we plug four into here, and we're going to get two minus four, three, two, one minus four. Simplify this result, and we end up getting negative two, three, two, negative three. Okay, so we're back to the previous step, right? So what we need to do is figure out the null space of this matrix, okay? All right, so we're gonna have minus two, three, Two and minus three. Again, doing the RREF, we're going to get uh, minus two, three, zero, zero. And I'll go ahead and put the, I'll go ahead and augment the zero vectors on there, even though it's not really that important. But it's just to emphasize that we are solving for the null space. Okay, okay so doing the RREF, remember that's what we. Basically, that's what was done here as well. Okay, now we go back and solve for this. So we're going to let y be equal to some parameter t. Right? Where t is an element of the real numbers. Okay, yeah, that's coming from similar to what we did here. Zero times any number will give you zero. Okay. This is so we so going back here, y is a free variable, right? Okay? All right, and by the way, this value here is what's called a pivot, right? We have a pivot position, we have one is in the uh, is a pivot for that. Same thing here, minus two is a pivot. So since it's in the column, right, corresponding to the x, then and then we have this one, okay? Um, technically, zero is not a pivot, okay? So it's a free variable then, okay, for that, uh, for y. Okay, so since y is equal to two, 
I'm sorry, T, then we can figure out what X is. Right, we go up here, we have minus two times X plus three times Y equals to zero. Since Y is T, we have this minus two X plus three T equals to zero. Okay. And then we have, furthermore, we have minus two X equals to negative three T. And therefore X, okay, X has to be equal to three halves T. Okay, so let's write our results. So we have the vector, the solution vector x. So this is three halves t. And then we have y was t. So now this is the same, right, as this. Okay, t times, or t times the vector three halves one. Okay, so we have something similar to what we had over here. Okay, so again, we have basically the span of this vector, any right, any vector in the span of this vector is in is in the uh, solution set. So traditionally, the eigenvectors are usually written where the entries are integer values. Okay. So notice we have a fractional value here. So the way we can get this in integer form is to multiply these entries, multiply each one by the denominator here, which in this case is two. Okay? Right, so this implies, right? This is this, right? So what I mean here, this is the same, right, um, as saying this. Right? But whatever is in here is also in here. All we did is multiply both of these by three, by um, sorry, by two. Okay. Right? Okay. So the solution of x is in the span of this factor three, two. So that is, that turns out to be our other eigenvector. Okay. Four, lambda equals to four. All right, so let's put all this information together. Okay, so we have um, we have the eigenvector and eigen for this corresponding eigenvalue, and we have this eigenvector corresponding to that eigenvalue. Okay, so we take we put those each so each of these. Okay, we're gonna have the this okay times e to the negative one t plus this eigenvector times e to the four t. So we're taking so that so each of these right each of these is a solution for this system and then we take the linear combination okay all right so let's write that out so over here we have okay minus one one e to the in this case minus t okay or because lambda was negative one okay and then over here we have Three two times e to the four t. So this is a solution, and this is a solution. Just just like before, when we looked at um, when we looked at a um, a regular homogeneous differential equation, we took the linear combination. Same thing here. We're going to take the linear combination of these. Okay. So let's write that here. So the overall solution okay, that we get is this. Okay, so it's going to be an x. So x of t equals to, we have, let's do that one first. So we have 3, 2 times e to the 4t, okay, plus and also I need a, since we're taking the linear combination, I need my constant here. So let's put that here. So let's say C1. Okay, so there's my constant. Okay. Plus, okay. Okay. 
make sure there's room there, plus C2 of this one. All right, there's our, there's our solution okay, for this uh, system. Okay. All right, so you can kind of skid and you can kind of get the idea here. Um, if you have a, a system, let's say it's, and there's a, um, and there's a uh, end by end matrix associated with that. And let's assume that you're for the, for the characteristic equation, you get an n degree polynomial. And let's assume that you have um, indistinct roots. Then for each root, you're going to have one of these, you're going to have a solution of these forms. So in this case, it's two by two. Our characteristic equation, we had two distinct solutions. So therefore we have each one of these is a, is a solution. And therefore the collection of this gives you basically your fundamental solution set. Okay? Or in other words, basically just taking the linear combination forms the general solution. Okay? All right, very nice. Um, definitely a very nice application from linear algebra. All right, so let's, what happens now if, if we have repeated um, eigenvalues? Okay? Um, so actually, I do want to. So before we go to the repeated eigenvalues, I do want to go through another example, one of these, except um, in this case, it will have. Um, the one I want to show you will have three distinct, uh, sorry, uh, it will have, yeah, three, three distinct solutions. Okay, so I, I think it would be worth, um, I think it'd be worth some time to go through that. So let's, let's do that. Uh, let's do that for the other, for the next example. And then we'll look at what happens when you have repeated eigenvalues. Um, it's a similar idea when we looked at, um, uh, when we looked at um, the other the other uh, homogeneous um, differential equations, so uh, you're going to see some similarities here as well. Okay. All right, so let's say we're solving this now. Okay, so let's say solve. Okay, so we have one, negative two, two. Minus two, one, minus two, two, negative two, and one. Um, notice that we're working with a um, symmetric matrix, which means that if you take what's called the transpose of this and you end up getting itself. In other words, if you look along the diagonal here, you can see that you have minus two, minus two, 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 and negative two and two. Um, so we have a symmetric matrix, which has a lot of, um, 
there's a lot of nice uh, properties for these. Okay. And again, you'll learn if you take linear algebra, you'll learn you'll learn about you know, you'll you'll learn the benefits of these. Okay. Um, so let's start first. Right. We have a three by three, so we need to figure out right, to solve this. We need to um, find the find the eigenvalues. So we need to take the determinant of this. This one. So let's call this A here. A minus lambda i. Okay, so we have one minus lambda. We have two, zero. All right, that's gonna be two. Okay. And we have minus two, uh, one minus lambda, negative two, two minus two, and one minus lambda. All right, so there's our right. There's our simplified form of this. Um, okay, so going through all right. So going through the determinant, right? This is um, you can use the cofactor. What's called the cofactor expansion, or you can use um, there's a there's a really I would say um, kind of like a shortcut for doing this. Um, but that shortcut only works for three by three. Um, I can show you that here. In fact, I think I may have shown that in another video. Um, but that's yeah. Let me go ahead and go through this anyway. So let's let's do that here. Okay. So um, all right. So let's let me show you that shortcut. And again, this shortcut to find the determinant of the for this matrix is only works for three by three. Oh, yeah. okay. I have to be careful of my notation here. One of my former professors was very, very strict on notation. It would take off points. If you use the wrong notation, so which I think is good actually it helps it um, later when you're uh, when you're actually writing um, when you start to publish uh, papers. But in any case, here's like, here's what we're looking for. Okay, so let's figure out the determinant of this. Okay, so we have one minus lambda, negative two, two, minus two, one minus lambda. So just kind of recopying all this. And then what we want to do is we want to take column one and put it here. Put column two, right, take column two and put it here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look, we're going to multiply along these diagonals. Okay, yes, so we have. And then this one, and then this one here. And then we have the other one. So I'll use a different color. We have this one, this one, and this one. And again, this only works for a three by three. Um, and like I said, you can also use cofactor expansion here. Uh, but a lot of times, and if you're, this is a technique that's used by um, physicists actually. And it's in this idea, it works well if you're doing like what's called a cross product. Okay, so multiplying along our entries here. Okay, so we're gonna have, um, let's 
the right. So we're going to have this is going to be four times one minus lambda. Here, this is going to be we have plus we have minus two and negative two. Is, right, multiplying those, you get negative four times one minus lambda. And then this is going to be plus four times one minus lambda. Okay. Now, what we need to do is eventually we're going to take and we're going to take whatever we get here and subtract it from these. Okay. Okay. So now, okay, we take the product of these. We're going to get, and we're going to, so we're going to get, we're going to, whatever we get here, we're going to subtract this one. Okay. So we get one minus lambda power three. Um, here we get minus two times negative two times two, that's going to be plus eight. And then here we get plus eight again. Okay. And remember, all this, right, we're interested in um, taking this and setting it equal to zero. Okay. So simplify all this. Okay. Um, so it takes a little bit, a little bit of work, just a few lines here, uh, but we end up getting this. I don't want to kind of bore you. I don't want to bore you with the details of that. I think um, you should be able to do this if you're, you know, if you're in differential equations. All right. So there's so there there's what we have. We have a uh, third degree polynomial here. Okay. And right away you can see that we're going to get a uh, we have a uh, we have a root there uh, with multiplicity of two. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. All right. So let's see what happens with that case. Okay. So this is a good example uh, because of this here. All right. So um, let's go and solve this. Obviously, we're going to get lambda equals to negative one. Actually, this is going to be. Yeah, so sorry, minus one with multiplicity of two. And then we have lambda equals to five with multiplicity of one, okay? All right. All right, so let's look, let's go ahead and find the, the corresponding um, eigenvector for lambda equals to negative one. All right. So that here. So we can take this and substitute into, into uh, our matrix here, right? Into here, right here. Okay, so we have, okay, so for lambda equals to negative one. All right, so we have one minus negative one. Then we have negative two. We have two minus two, one minus negative one, negative two, two minus two, and then one minus negative one. Okay. This is going to give us two here, minus two, two, minus two, uh, two, negative two. Two, negative two, and two. All right, assuming I did all that correctly, I'll just double check myself here. Um, everything looks good. Okay, so we do the REF on this. Okay, so we can, you can use your calculator here. Again, I, I'll provide a link in the, um, there will be a link in the, uh, uh, there's a link on how to do that, how to put, given a matrix, how to put the matrix into REF. Okay. So we end up getting, okay, and I probably need to move this down here. We end up getting with, we, we actually get uh, two, uh, two rows of zeros here. Which is not surprising, 
um, because remember the multiplicity for this eigenvalue was two. Okay, so we need to find the null space of this. All right. Okay, finding the null space, okay, we have, this time we have two free variables. Why is that? Well, because again, we have a pivot here, and let's say this is x, y, and z. So we have a pivot corresponding to x, and then we don't have a, we have a zero here, and a zero here. So we're going to have a, right, so we have a free variable for y and a free variable for Z. All right. Okay, so all right, let's write that out. Okay, so we're gonna let Z be equal to um, I'm gonna call this see it looks like yeah, I'm calling this T. Okay. You can pick whatever letter you want though, it doesn't matter. As long as it's not the same variable. It's again, it's not good practice to do that. So T is an element of the real numbers. Okay. And then I'm going to say um, for Y, we're going to, we need to pick a different representation. So let Y be equal to S, where S is a element of the real numbers. Okay. okay, so that means we, right, that means for X, we have this. So X, we have X minus Y plus C equals to zero. That's coming from this first row. So we have X minus S plus T equals to zero. So just plugging in S and T and then solving for X. So X turns out to be S minus T, where S and T are real values. Okay, so we have, basically we have um, X, Y, and Z all in terms of our free variable. Okay, so the solution vector for this, okay, for the, for the null space, right? We have S minus T, we have S, okay? Right, because you have X, Y, and Z, okay? So I'll write that out here just to illustrate that. So X is S minus T, Y is S and then Z is T. So what we can do, just like we did before, we can write it in what's called parametric form, okay? Where we basically factor out the variable. We have S, okay? So that's gonna leave us with one here, one, and then zero. We don't have an S here, right? And then plus T, in fact, you have T, that's gonna be minus one, zero, and one. Okay, so now this basically describes our solution space. Okay, so X, right? so X belongs to any solution of this belongs to the span of I'm going to say this is V one. I'll call this V one, and I'll call this V two. So any solution of this belongs in the span of V1 and V2. In other words, right, we're just taking the linear combination. In fact, these two vectors form a plane. So any vector, okay, any solution of this lives in the plane spanned by these two vectors. Okay. Right. So this is, um, so you can easily verify that this is a subspace, right? Or okay. Um, in other words, this is our eigenspace. All right, for um, for that lamp for that eigenvalue. Okay, so right, we have okay, so our eigenvectors. Let's go this. Okay, the eigenvectors are the basically are just the basis. Okay. 
we have one, one, zero, and negative one, one, sorry, negative one, uh, zero and one. So there's our eigenvectors for lambda equals to negative one. Okay. All right, now we have to find the eigenvector for, uh, for lambda equals to five. Okay, so let's do that here. All right, so just like before, we're gonna plug lambda equals to five into here. Okay, so just plugging five into, into the lambda values here, and we end up getting negative four, negative two, and two, minus two, um, negative four, minus two, and two, negative two, and negative four. Okay. All right, so I can erase this. Check my signs real quick. Just double check here. Okay, now we do the REF on this. And we end up getting one, zero minus one, uh, zero, one, one, and the last row is all zeros as we, right? We're always, again, we always, um, we're always gonna get at least one row of zeros because we're forcing the, the determinant to be, to be zero. Now we gotta find the null space for this matrix. Okay, uh, let's do it, right? Okay, so we need, um, we need to let, and again, we have X, Y, and Z. We're gonna, we have like one free variable. We're gonna let that be equal to T. Where T is an element of the real numbers, okay? Okay, um, so then we have, our y, right, for, 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 for the second row, we have y plus z equals to zero, okay? And again, just to, you know, just to, just to reassure, I did it augment the zero vector because it's kind of understood that we're looking for the null space and the, the row of the column of zeros is not going to really change. It's not gonna change at all for this, okay? So we have y plus z equal to zero, okay? So that means y is equal to minus z, so this implies that y must be equal to minus t. And then for x, right, for the, uh, for the first row, we have x minus z equals to zero. This implies that x equals to z. Therefore, x has to be equal to t. Okay, beautiful, right? Okay, so now our solution vector is going to be Okay, make some more room here. So we have T minus T and T. So we can go ahead and factor out T here. So it's gonna be one, negative one and one. Okay. So in this case, X, any solution for X, right, belongs in the span of this vector. Let's call that, we're gonna call that B1.
Okay. Okay, so we have enough now uh, to formulate our solution. Okay, so over here, we have, <coughs> so we have um, yeah, C1, it's right over here we have, right this way. So we have E, let's see, E to the lambda T, sorry, we have to put the vector there. So we have one, one zero times E to the minus T, and we have minus one zero one E to the minus T. All right. Okay, let's look at the other one here. Here we have one negative one times e to the five t. Okay. So now we just take the linear combination of those. Okay. So the overall solution that we have, okay, is going to be this. Make sure I have enough space there. Okay, so. Okay, so x of t okay, is going to be equal to. Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the order in which you put these in, but each one of these should have a constant. You're taking a linear combination of all this, so we have c one. One one zero plus C two okay. Okay. times this vector e to the minus t. And then plus that one. So one negative one one times e to the five t. And there it is. Okay. There's our solution to this system. Okay. Ooh, all right. Okay. All right. Now let's see. Uh, let's see what happens when we have. If we get, um, if we have, um, okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, so this is an example for repeated, obviously, you get repeated eigenvalues. So, what happens now uh, if we get, okay, let's say we have a two by two matrix associated with a system. And let's say we only get, um, we basically get just one uh, eigenvalue out of there, okay? Um, with multiplicity of two, okay? So, and then we end up with, okay? In that case, um, it is possible that you end up getting just one eigenvalue. So you have a two by two system, two by two matrix, right? With just one eigenvector. So ideally you want to make sure you want the number of eigenvectors should match the, the size, right? The number of rows or columns, okay? So let's look at what, let's look at that um, particular situation. So, so for example, here, here we're okay uh, because when we, when we solve for the eigenvalues here, uh, we ended up getting, um, it ended up that negative one had a multiplicity of two, and then we and then we got two eigenvectors from here. And then the other one for lambda equals five gave us the gave us another eigenvector. So we have a total of three. So basically the uh, so in this case, the um, the eigenvectors, right? This um, the collection, okay, of eigenvectors that we have. Um, 
um, serves as a basis for the um, for our vector space. Okay, uh, but sometimes it doesn't always happen that way. Okay, so we're going to look at that situation and what to do. Okay. All right, so let's consider the following examples. So first of all, right, so Not all eigenvalues, as we just saw, not all eigenvalues of an n by n matrix, um, let's call that A, are distinct. And so then, again, what happens is that um, it's possible that you find an eigenvalue, okay? Let's say it's like in this case, let's say we have two by two, and we get its multiplicity of two. However, it only has one eigenvector. Um, so, ideally, we we'll want to, you know, ideally, when solving these, we want to, we always want to come up with the most uh, general solution set. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Okay. okay so let's consider this. Consider the following system. So we have x prime equals to three, negative 18, two and negative nine. Okay, let's go ahead and find the, um, let's go ahead and first find the eigenvalues, see what's going on here. Okay, so we have a minus lambda i, Of three negative 18 two minus nine minus lambda zero zero nine. okay so that's going to give us three minus lambda minus 18 two and minus nine minus lambda okay let's go and find the right go and find the uh, Oh, oh, sorry, the determinant of this. Okay. okay. So we have, okay, this is going to be three minus lambda, minus nine minus lambda. Okay, plus 36, okay. And so now we're gonna set that equal to zero, right? Do that here. So setting the determinant equal to zero, uh, we end up getting, multiplying everything out, we end up getting lambda squared uh, plus six lambda plus nine equals to zero. So this is going to give us lambda minus three squared, which tells us that we end up getting lambda equals to three with multiplicity of two. 
All right. So now let's figure out the corresponding, let's figure out the um, eigenvector. Okay, so plug three back into here. Okay. We got three minus three, negative 18. Two, and then we have negative nine minus three. Zero, negative 18, two, and then uh, we have uh, negative 12. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, did I do that right? Hold on. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Sorry. This should be lambda plus three. Ah, I thought this was sorry. So that's minus three. So no wonder. Sorry. So that should be plus three. Which makes sense from what I had earlier here. So that changes, obviously that's gonna change this here. So, so that's gonna be three minus negative three. And then we have see, minus 18, that still remains two and then negative nine minus negative three. Okay, there we go. So we have six, negative 18, two, and negative six. I was curious about that because I was thinking, how could that be? You know, the, what I had earlier, it's like, didn't look right um, because it didn't have, um, when reducing it, it, there was no way to get a row, to get a um, row of zeros. So if that happens, if you're reducing something like this and you don't get a row of zeros, you don't get at least one row of zeros, then there's something, then that means there was a miscalculation before, it, which is what, which is what I um, discovered here. Okay, so, um, so yeah, lambda should be minus three. Now everything looks uh, looks fine. Okay, and then going through, do the REF on this. Okay, we have again. We have to go to the next line here. So we're going to end up getting right, a row of zeros here. So we have, let's see, one negative three, zero, zero. All right. So now we need to solve for the null space. Okay. So solving for the null space, okay, again, we have a free variable in the, um, for y. Okay. okay, so we let y be equal to t, where t is an element of the real numbers. Um, therefore, um, for x, we have, or looking at the first row, we have x minus 3y equal to 0. Um, so this is just x minus 3t, and therefore x is equal to 3 times t. So therefore, for our solution vector, okay, we have, okay, um, let's see, 3t and t, which is the same as t times 3, 1. So writing this in parametric form. Okay, so that tells us, um, hold on, let's see. 
B1. Yep. Okay. So that tells us, right, again, the span of this, uh, the solution of this spans the vector 3, 1. So this is what we want to use for our eigenvector. This is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals to 3. All right, so if we stop here, okay, that's fine. This will work. Uh, we can use that as a solution, but well, we have a two by two. So we desire uh, the number of terms in our solution should match the, uh, the number of rows or columns for this. Okay, so, we sh so how do we get, so the question is how can we get, uh, how do we get the other form, okay? Okay. All right, let's see. All right, so we so again, we want to come up with two other. Uh, we can we want to come up with another a more general solution. Okay. All right, let's go back here. Oops. All right, so. So we're interested in finding these general solutions. Okay. Okay, so let's look into this. So we'll stop here, okay? Uh, we have to go back to the sort of like the drawing board and kind of work on um, basically come up with a, a new scheme or expand on the scheme that we're currently working with um, because this, um, this is not good enough for us. Okay. Okay. So it turns out that there will be, right, there will be a, a second solution of this. And that second solution will consist of two more uh, vectors. All right, let's go back here. Okay. All right, so suppose that again, we'll go back to this. Just need to go, need to examine what we have here. So suppose that lambda one is an eigenvalue of multiplicity of two, which is basically what we have here. Okay. So if you recall, if I remember correctly, yeah, we had an eigenvector multiplicity of two. So let me just indicate that here. Okay. So this also indicate this. All, this also shows you that just because an eigenvalue an eigenvalue with a multiplicity doesn't mean doesn't really tell you the um, doesn't imply that you're going to get, um, in this case, um, a um, two two eigenvectors. Okay. Um, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Just depends. Okay. okay. All right. So suppose that we have this. Right. Suppose that lambda one is an eigenvalue m. Okay. Of m multiplicity. or more okay let's say well I can write of it's like I'm saying multiplicity of two sorry and there is 
only one eigen one eigenvector. That's associated uh, with this value. Okay. So the, the point is that we can come up, it is possible to come up with a second solution. Okay, um, that form is given as x of two okay, equals to k times t e to the lambda one t plus p. Okay, so um, k and k and p are going to be uh, basically those are vectors r r and our vector space r of n. So that's just the notion for for um, for a general vector space. Okay. All right. So K and P are vectors. Okay. So let's. So from here, what we what we need to do is we need to figure out how can we the goal is how can we get K and P. I mean, we we already have um, we already have lambda going back here. So so how can we get how can we get this desired solution? Okay. So that's the next thing we're going to look at. So, like with, with just like with anything else that we've done, okay, um, we're going to take this substitute back into our into our system and then see what happens. Okay. We're going to substitute this into our system. Okay. All right. All right. So we need obviously we need to take the derivative of this. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. So we need to use the product rule here. So taking the derivative of this, we're going to get k times. So take the derivative with respect to t. We're going to get k times e to the lambda one t right, plus k t times lambda one e to the lambda one t. So just using the product rule here, okay. Plus, okay, taking the derivative of this, we're going to get p times lambda one times e to the lambda one t. So that is the derivative of x, okay, of x2. And then that's going to be equated to a times x. Okay. Make sure everything's consistent here. Okay. Um, let's see. All right, so let me see. I'm sorry. So I'm going to set, so basically, I'm going to set all this equal to zero. Okay. All right, so we get minus, let's see. Uh, okay, so I'm going to write this way. So minus a k t e to the lambda one t. So I'm Basically, going to move these over to this side. Okay. 
Jesus. Okay, um, and then plus we have this term here. Okay, so again, just I'm just rearranging and setting everything equal to zero, and the reason I the reason that I wrote it out this way is so that we can um, go ahead and factor out, and recognize that we have a common factor here, so t times e to the eleventh one t, and same thing here. Okay. And here. So they both, both of these terms, right? Both of these terms have a common factor. That is T times E to the power of lambda one T. Uh, okay. And, and also, again, what I'm doing, so, okay, let's write this way first. And then over here, see, I'm, I factor out e to the lambda one t. Okay. All right. So. Um, if we look at this closely, okay, I'm going to rewrite this because since we're setting everything equal to zero, and this is the same. By the way, that's the that's a zero vector there. So I didn't put the arrow because it's understood to be that. Okay. All right. So there we go. So I basically just divide everything by by negative here. Okay. So now, in order for this equation, in order for this equation to be equal to zero, right? This what we can do is we can look at this part. This part. Okay. Uh, we can say. This is going to be zero, and this will be zero. Okay, and remember, e to the lambda t, right, um, is never going to be zero. Okay, All right. Okay, so if so, by making this, by forcing this to be zero, this will be zero. Then the whole thing will be zero, and that's going to be the key on how we solve for p and um, how we solve for p and um, k here. All right. So let's go back over here. All right, let's go over here. Um, so we have AK A minus lambda 1K equals to zero. Okay. So that implies basically this we have A minus lambda 1 times I times K. And again, K, um, I didn't put the arrow here, okay, because it is understood that K and P are vectors. Okay. All right, and then, so we have this, okay? And then, um, 
so basically k so you can see that k is an um, is an eigenvector of 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 a okay Okay, so solving that, we can solve this. We know A, we know lambda one, we can solve for that, we can solve for K, and then we can use that information to solve for our second equation here. Okay, so we have AP minus P minus K equals to zero. So that's going to give us Again, we can factor, or sorry, yeah, we can move the k over and then factor out p. So I'm calling that lambda. Let's see, yeah, yeah lambda one. Okay. Uh, oh, I think I forgot my lambda here. Hold on, oh, I've got lambda from here. Sorry. Yeah, there should be a lambda one there. All good. Okay. So there's a lambda. So that's coming from this term. Okay. All right. So then we have a minus lambda one times i times p equals to k. So uh, basically, we have a system here. It's interesting. We have a system within a system. Okay. So we solve for k. Once we solve for k, then we can solve for p. All right, so we have a uh, we have a strategy now, and this can be generalized for eigenvalues of multiplicity of m. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, let's go back to the example that we were working with and implement this. Okay, all right, let's go back here, okay, back to our original system. Um, let's see, let's keep that there, okay, and then let's do, let's continue, uh, let's continue this here. Going back to our original problem. So we've already shown that, right? We've already shown that lambda, uh, the eigenvalue is negative, uh, sorry, was negative three, right? Okay. That was. So that's negative three. That was negative three that we got earlier. All right, with a corresponding eigenvector of three one. All right, so so now we got to implement this part to find the other part of the solution. Okay. All right, so all right, so going to the equation. First equation, we have a minus. Okay, so we have a. Minus lambda one times i times k equals to zero. So this implies that we have let's see, three negative eighteen. Write this. Let's go back here.
Okay, so we have a plus, well, yeah, because lambda is negative three, so we have a plus three i times k equals to zero. So, expanding on this, okay, that's, this is going to be, uh, I'm calling this, am I calling this P or K? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we already, okay. So yeah, so we kind of already did this part. That's right. Um, so K turns out to be, uh, we already solved this actually. So this was, um, so we had K was three, one. So now we have to do, so we already did this. Okay, so, all right. So let's go back here. So we had from this, okay. Uh, we had x1 right, equal to c1 times 3, 1 times e to the minus 3t. Okay, so we have already done, we basically already took care of the first one. Um, that was, obviously it's here, okay? Now we can use this to figure out what, uh, what k is, okay? All right, all right, sorry, to figure out what is, I'm sorry, not k, but figure out what p is, okay? Well, now we solve for P. All right, so since we're dealing with um, a vector in R2, we have P1, P2. Okay, so we have A minus lambda one, in this case, A plus three lambda times P equals to K. Again, utilizing this, right, where lambda was negative three. Okay, so this is going to give us, three minus 18, we have two, negative nine, plus three times lambda, Three zero zero three. Right, so lambda was what? Um, let's see, three times lambda. Oh, so sorry, three times that should be i. Okay, so that's three zero zero three. Okay, all right. Okay, so we have just expanding on this a plus three times i. Um, right, this is this is going to be i two because we're working with um, the vectors, right? Our eigenvectors are in R two, okay? And then we have p and then k. And k was k was three one. All right. Okay, so we have, um, so from here, okay, we're gonna get uh, six minus 18 and two and six, minus six. All right. All right, there's our there's our system. Okay. Okay, so solving this now, okay. Uh, all right, we can um, go ahead augment, take this matrix, augment it with this uh, uh, with this vector, okay, and then do the REF. Okay, so let's so we have everything there. Uh, let's go ahead and race this part. Okay. 
All right, so we have six, let's see, six minus 18. And what was it two minus six? We can augment the uh, factor three one up there. Doing the going through and doing the REF. Okay. We end up getting one, negative three, zero, zero, and then one half and zero. So not surprising that we get a row of zeros here. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. So again, um, we have a free variable for y one for uh, for y. Or, right, let y be equal to t, where we have uh, where t is some element of the real numbers. And then from there, we have x minus 3y equals to 1 half. And then from there, okay, we have so x minus 3 times t equals to 1 half. All right, so that means x is going to be equal to 3t plus 1 half. All right, so our solution vector going to be 3t plus 1 half and t. So putting this into parametric form, they were going to get 3, 1 plus 1 half and 0. Since this only depends, since there's no, uh, there's no value without t. Okay. So for simplicity, um, right, we can just let um, t be zero, okay? Okay, um, let's see, yeah. So this works. Right by letting t go zero, we end up with uh, we'll end up with this one. Okay, all right. So that will that's fine. Okay, we don't you know that'll work. Okay, um, and so therefore we get right uh, p one is equal to one half, and p two is equal to zero. Half and let's see, uh, one half. Yeah, one half is in there. Okay, so I'm double check myself here. Okay, there you go. All right, there is your um, solution for p. Okay, we have everything now. Okay, have enough solution to to write our. We have enough. Sorry, we have enough information to write our um, to get our general solution. All right, so we have x t. So the eigenvector 3, 1, right, that corresponded to lambda equals to negative 3. Okay. Plus C2, okay, so this is where our second solution is coming from. Okay, so we have 3, 1. Uh, I'll write this way, put parentheses here. So what we do, just like kind of what we saw before, um, we're going to take uh, t, multiply it by, multiply this by t, right? Okay. Okay. Um, remember that was if if you right in our in our original assumption, we had a t here. That's how we were able to derive those equations that we had earlier here. 
Okay, so that's where that is coming from. Okay, and then um, we have this one. All right, there it is. And again, to refresh you on that, okay. I'll write those equations here. We had, remember that form we had for the second solution, we had this form. So that this right, is basically coming from here. Uh, and then this one is coming from when we first uh, when we first solved for the um, when we first uh, started off with the problem. okay? So okay, we have we have both our solutions, okay? So this being the first, right this is our first solution here, right? And this, is our second form. Okay. All right. And okay. So we took the linear combination of the first one and the second one. Okay. So um, this can easily be extended uh, if right, for um, for higher uh, multiplicities. Okay. All right, um, let's see. So let's take a look at that. Um, let's take a look at a system that has uh, that has an eigenvalue with multiplicity of three. And then, so we can, I can show you how to extend this, okay? Okay, when the coefficient matrix A has, yeah, so if it has only one eigenvalue, okay, sorry, only one eigenvector associated. Associate with um, with an eigenvalue lambda one with a multiplicity of three. Okay. Write that a little bit better. Ooh, okay. Okay, we can find a third solution. Thank you. 
of this form. Okay, so that is, yep, so it is possible, okay, and we can extend this actually for higher, uh, for higher multiplicities. All right, um, so based on, based on the result that we got last time for, um, for multiplicity of two, remember that we ended up getting um, a system of equations. So this, okay, so this is going to, um, basically the way, um, the way to get to these P and Q is that, that we have K, P and Q. So we're gonna have um, a system of three equations and three unknowns, okay? All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so again, we can actually go through and rederive these, but it's not necessary. We can just extend on the previous idea, okay? So we end up getting a system. Again, I'm not going to put the arrows here. We understand what vectors we understand which are the uh, vector components, or we understand the uh, the vectors here. Uh, so we have this system, okay, and then we have a minus lambda i, or sorry, lambda one times p equals to k. So this is what we had last time. Okay, now we end, now we have a third equation. We're going to let this be q. equals to P, okay? So this time now, right? We go, again, the goal is to figure out K, P, and Q. So get K, solve for K from here. Once you solve for K, solve for P. And once we have P, we can solve for Q, okay? So let's look at an example of this, okay? All right, suppose we want to solve this, okay? Okay, so going through, uh, going through and uh, basically uh, we need to set up our determinant here, okay? It's, it's nice because we have, we have a, what's called an upper triangular matrix. All right, so we have, um, and let's just call this A. So we need to figure out the null space of this. Okay, so we need to set this determinant equal to zero. 
Um, so there is a theorem um, and in your algebra that says that um, if you have a, if you have a um, triangular system like this or a triangular matrix, the determinant is just equal to the product of the uh, entries on the, along the main diagonal. So we end up getting, basically we have uh, two minus lambda to the power three equal to zero. So therefore lambda is equal to three, okay. oh, sorry, equal to two with multiplicity of three. Okay, right, so first thing, right, we got to solve for, we need to work on this equation. We need to figure out, we need to solve the null space for this. So in other words, we need to find K, right? So plugging in lambda equals two into here, Okay, um, let's see. Okay, so we had zero, one, six, zero, zero, five, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so we gotta find the null space of that. Okay, um, so uh, do the REF on this, okay. Doing the REF, we get zero, one, zero, 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 one, and then zero, zero, zero. Okay. So we have one free variable, namely, and um, right, namely for um, for Z. Okay, uh, sorry for uh, sorry for X. Okay, because. Here, this is in right. This is in the this right. This is in the second columns and the third column. Okay, so um, in fact, we can rearrange this. Okay. All right. So we can see now that x is uh, x is. It's going to be a free variable here. Okay, so we're going to let x be equal to t. Where t is some element, some real element, and because of these, because of this, um, y, y and z are going to be zero. Okay, so let's find out what we have here. So that means for our vector k, okay, we're going to get here. So we have let's see, p zero zero. So there's right. Um, so that basis vector one zero zero that is k. So now we have k. All right. So now let's solve for p. Go to the second equation. Solve for k now. Okay. Using the same right, using the same matrix. Okay. Have e x 
there. So just expanding on this. Okay. Now I'm going to the again going uh, applying the REF here. Let's see, we end up getting zero, one, zero, 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 one. And then we have our row of zeros here. Okay. All right, so let's see. Uh, again, this is the same as this. Okay, so again, X is going to be T. Where T is some element of the real numbers and okay. Z, Z will be zero, right? And Y will be one. Well, that means our solution vector for P will be this. So we have T and then Y is one and zero. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay. All right, so um, just like we look, just like um, the previous previous example, we can let t be equal zero and just utilize this vector. Okay, so that makes life uh, that makes life a little bit easier. So there's our. Um, so we want to let this be our p vector. Okay, so all right. Um, okay. All right. So. Okay, so this was the general solution we got for k, right? So any k, any solution that spans this vector is will satisfy k. So just to be specific here, this is what we're going to. That's what we're going to let k be for for our general solution. Same idea here. We let t be zero, so we we'll use this one. Okay? So we were just letting t be one. Okay, so now. We have P, now we can solve for Q. Back to this equation. Using the same matrix that we have. Call that Q. And that's, we're setting that equal to P, zero, one, zero. Okay. All right, so now, again, doing the RAF on this. So let's go ahead and omit. Go ahead and take this matrix and augment, augment it, uh, augment this vector. So do that here. And we get zero, one, zero, 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 one. And then last, we have the row of zeros here.
Okay. So we get this row one yeah, minus six fifty or one fifth. Okay. All right. Um, same, same idea. Okay. We're going to have uh, X. Right? X is going to be our free variable. And it looks like here Y will be six. Sorry, minus six fifths. And Z is going to be equal to one fifth. Okay. All right. So then, okay. So for our, for our vector Q, okay, we have Z. T minus six fifths and one fifth. Okay. All right, and then that can be um, again. Uh, we can. We write this in parametric form. We get one minus six fifths. One fifth. Oh, sorry. So you get one zero zero plus zero minus six fifths and one fifth. Okay. And then again, we can let T be zero to extract that last uh, to extract this. Or to use this as Q. Okay. Let's do that here. All right. That's a lot of work, okay? But we got what we need. So now we can summarize, right? We can write, take all this information and write out our general solution for, um, for this system. Okay, so let's write that out. So we have X of T. Okay, so from the first solution, right from this one, we have C1 times, what was it, uh, one, this vector, one, zero, zero, times e to, what was the, okay, our lambda, or sorry, our eigenvalue was two, so two t, okay, plus, so this is going to be for our second part, second solution, so we have, okay, so that second part is going to have the form of the one that we derived previously, okay? That was for, like, for um, if we had this situation, two equations, okay? So we have, we have the first one, okay? That's T times E to the two T plus the, okay? The second form, okay? So going back, so you may have to review this. Yeah. So we had zero, one, zero there. Times e to the three t. Okay. Plus, okay. So there's the. So here's our third solution, third part. 
we have one zero zero. That was what we had earlier. So that was that form that we had. Um, let me write that. So let me write that out. So you have it as a reference here. So remember that for uh, for that form for the third part for the third solution. Okay. So that's, that's going to be the third component of the general solution. Okay. All right. So we have C3 times K. K was there. Right? And then T squared over. So basically one half. So I'll write this way T squared over two times E to the 2T plus P, okay? uh, which was over there, zero, one, zero. times T e to the 2T okay, plus Q. So minus six fifths, one fifth and zero. Okay, let's see. Whew. All right. Make sure I got everything there and that looks good. Got my T there. Yep. So it's just, again, so this is just an extension of the previous idea that we talked about. Okay. All right. Where you have, okay. all right. So you have your, right. this is the first part, would be the second solution and then your third solution. So again, we take. The idea is we take the linear combination of those and that forms your general, your overall general solution, your fundamental. So, so each of these, right, is your, basically your forms a fundamental set, okay? That's why go back here. That's why we're only interested in the simplest form. Like right here, we let T be one. Here, we let T be zero, okay? And then same thing with this one, okay? So you could actually, technically, you could choose any vector from, Right? You can choose any vector from each of these and it will still work as a solution. But, you know, we try to keep things as simple as possible because these things can get really complicated. All right, so that's basically how we can solve a, um, a uh, you know, a um, homogeneous uh, linear system of uh, differential equations, okay? Um, there is, so there is, um, of course, we, there is, um, the possibility where you're, um, you have complex eigenvalues and complex eigenvectors that gets even more, that gets even more difficult, um, and that will, um, that we done in a, in a separate video. Okay, so I think yeah, this is a good stopping point, um, and then I will, yeah, so I'll definitely stop here. Okay, so take care, and continue, you know, continue your good work.